these parallel in uh, combination circuits. Um, this will be pretty short. It's basic information. So the first thing I want to show you is a series circuit. And a series circuit um, has three components. It has a wire uh, that leaves the battery or the generator. Then it has some sort of electrical load in it. The electrical load, uh, we are showing that uh, as a resistor. This is the symbol for a resistor, the zigzag pattern. That could be a light bulb, it could be a toaster, it could be a TV. Um, this is our battery. Now the electrons leave the battery, go through the resistors, and come back. So I'll show you um, if those arrows represented the electrons, if they represented the electricity, they would be leaving the battery through the wire, going through each uh, resistor, and then coming back into the battery. So a series circuit has one single path. All of the electrons have to go through that path. Um, if something were broken, so if I took a wire out, the electricity can't flow. There can't be any flow of electrons through that circuit. Uh, and it, everything will just turn off. So some of you may uh, have experienced this before. Say uh, if you have a strand of Christmas lights, and they're all wired in series. Um, if one bulb goes out, all the rest of the bulbs go out. I mean, you have to figure out exactly which wire is broken or which bulb is out. Usually a bulb is burned out. And if the bulb burns out, then the electricity can't flow through it anymore. So in order for that electricity to flow, all of the wires have to be present, all of the um, resistors have to be present. There has to be a path for the electricity to leave the battery and then come back in to the battery. If that doesn't exist, the electricity stops flowing. Now, a parallel circuit looks a little different. So a parallel circuit, uh, we, we still have the battery. We still have our resistors. But they're wired in a way that uh, the electricity has multiple paths to go down. So when the electricity leaves the battery, um, it, when it hits the first junction point, it can either go down or it could keep going straight. When it hits the second junction point, it can either go down or it can keep going straight. Um, and then if it comes back around, the electricity will rejoin and go back into the battery. Um, so there's something called voltage. And there's something else called current. Voltage is the amount of potential energy um, in the electrons. And the current is the number of electrons that are going down any path. So if you see here in the parallel circuit, and we're going to talk more about this on Thursday, uh, this arrow is longer. Let's say the current is six. When it hits this junction point, some of the electrons go down, some of them will go straight, some will go down, some will go straight. If each one of these resistors is exactly the same, then uh, the current down the first branch will be two, down the second branch it'll be two, down the third branch it'll be two. And then you'll see as it rejoins, it goes back to its original six and goes back in the battery. But the most important thing about a parallel circuit is that if one of these, if these were light bulbs, if one of these light bulbs went out, the other ones stay on. Let's see what that looks like. So let's say that I disconnected this wire. Um, the electricity will just skip that junction. It'll keep going straight. Some of it'll go down this junction. Some of it'll continue around down to that other the last light bulb, and then it rejoins, goes back in the battery. If I were to take out the second light bulb, the first light bulb and the third light bulb are still lit. So the electricity, once again, leaves the battery. Some of it goes down the first junction. The rest of it travels through into the last light bulb, and then it rejoins. And 
just so you could see, if I take out the last light bulb, the electricity leaves a battery, half of it goes down the first junction, the other half goes down the second junction. Now, it'll only be half and half, once again, if all of these light bulbs are the same. On Thursday, we're going to talk about if they're different, if they have different resistances, if they use up different amounts of energy. Then what happens? So those are basic series and parallel circuits. Now, most circuits in real life aren't just series or parallel, something that we would call a combination circuit. So in this combination circuit, the electricity leaves a battery, and there will be some part of the circuit that is in series. In this circuit, that's this first part. So all the electricity goes through this first light bulb, this first resistor, and then once it hits this, this part right here, the second part, these two light bulbs are in parallel with each other. So some of the electricity goes up through the first light bulb, some of the electricity goes through the second light bulb. And then at the, at the junction, it rejoins and goes back into the battery. Now, if we look at what happens in this circuit, if I take out one of the parallel light bulbs, the first light bulb that's in series, it still lights. The second light bulb that's in parallel, it still lights. And then the electricity comes back. If I took out the top light bulb that was in parallel, the electricity leaves the battery, goes through the series part, uh, and then it won't light up the top light bulb, but it will light up that bottom light bulb in parallel. But what would happen if I took out the first light bulb in series? Well, if you remember the series circuit, if the electricity doesn't have a path to leave and get back to the battery, everything turns off. So if if that first light bulb blew out, or I removed the wire, then the circuit will go dead. Nothing can be on. Now, if you have an on-off switch that you want to wire into a circuit, that on-off switch, that should be wired in series. Because if you flip the switch off and you break the circuit, you want everything to turn off. So your on-off switches will always be wired in series. Um, your other lights, probably you might want them in parallel because you would want them to stay lit. Um, if one of them blows out, the other one stays lit. Now your house is a lot like wired like this as well, um, where each one of these lights might represent a different room, like your living room and your dining room. If you turn off the living room lights, you don't want the dining room lights to go out. So you want to wire the different rooms in parallel. But um, there is a main breaker switch that's your fuse box. So you have a fuse box. Um, new, new fuse boxes have what look like on off switch. Um, old fuse boxes actually have uh, fuses that look like light bulbs that would burn out just like a light bulb. But uh, if there's too much if there's too much current flowing through the wire, the fuse box turns off the electricity to the house. You may have experienced this when uh, you have your microwave running and you have all your lights on and the TV's on and then someone turns on, say, a hairdryer. That may cause too much electricity to surge through the system, which is dangerous. It could start a fire. Um, so the circuit breaker uh, will flip and it'll turn off uh, the electricity going to everywhere. So I hope that makes sense. And uh, I'm looking forward to in the next few days when we can start talking about uh, Ohm's law. So we'll talk more specifically about the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance.